Continuing on with the BRICS 101 series, today we're going to focus on conditions. We're going to break this video down into three different sections. Step one, what exactly are conditions? Step two, how do you create and set up conditions for yourself? And then step three, how we can stack conditions on top of each other to create more comprehensive ways of working. So first of all, let's take a look at step one, what exactly are conditions? Conditions in Bricks Builder are a powerful tool that allows you to control the visibility and display elements based upon specific rules or conditions. This feature helps you create dynamic, personalized web experiences without any kind of custom code needed. Step two, how to set up a condition. So first of all, we need to make sure we've got something selected inside our editor to be able to show or hide based upon the condition or conditions we want to set up. For this example, we're going to choose this entire call to action section, but you don't have to. You could break this down to an individual element. For example, a button, a subheading, an image, all manner of different things. You could be as broad or as simple as you want to be. Okay, so we'll focus on this call to action section for this first part. With that selected, we can now come over to the left hand section and inside there we've got this conditions button at the top. If we choose that, that will open up the conditions builder. Now inside here, you've got the option to create or add a new condition and you can also close this panel down. If you want to find out more, you can click the learn more button to get the help documentation. So let's click on the plus and let's set our condition up. Now, if we open this up, you can see there's a lot of different condition options here. These are the things we check against. And as you can see, they're broken down into logical order. To start off with, we've got things to do with posts. So the post ID, title, post status, and so on. Then we've got user. So we've got things like the user login status, the user ID, the user's role. Then we've got day and time. So we can check whether this is a weekday, a date, a time, a date timestamp, kind of thing like that. It's just great if you want to run things like adverts and you want to specify they only run Monday to Friday or a certain date kind of period, you can use this function. Then we've probably got the more powerful section, which is the other section, which is where we've got dynamic data, the browser, the operating system, and things like the current and referrer URLs. So let's go and take a look at how we can show or hide this particular section now based upon the user's logged in status. So what we're going to do is we're going to and choose the select option. We'll go to the top and we'll choose user login. Then we've got the operator. How do you want to check against this particular value? Open this up and you can see we've got is or is not. Now these will change depending upon the type of comparison that you're doing. So we'll take a look at that as we take a look at some more examples. So we'll say is. Then we can choose from logged out or logged in. For this example, we're going to say logged in. So let's save this. Let's open an incognito window where I'm not logged in. And now if we scroll down that page, you'll see because I'm logged out, we don't see it. Simple as that. Now if we go and take a look at a page where I am logged in, and we scroll down to the bottom, you can see it now shows us that particular section. If you want to flip it, all you need to do is come back into this and change that to logged out. We we'll hit save. We'll refresh our incognito window. And if we scroll down, now we get to see that section. So you can see it's very simple and straightforward how you can set this up. Let's take a look at a slightly more comprehensive example, though, before we move on to step three. So let's clear this. We'll delete this condition. So let's say we want to show or hide things based upon the browser that the user is using. You may have certain parts of your website that don't look very good on like Safari, for example, or Internet Explorer. Well, we can handle that by showing or hiding them based upon that browser that's being used. So again, to do that, let's add a new condition in. Open the conditions option up and scroll down until we get to the browser. And from there, you can see we can open this up. We've got the is or is not. So we can say is, for example. And then we can see we can choose from a range of different browsers. So you may want to show or hide something based upon Internet Explorer. You can do that from here. So now if we were using Internet Explorer, this would be the show or hide it based upon the parameters that we set up. It's a good example of being able to use this in various different ways. There's one other thing I want to show you before we move on to some other examples. Now, before we go any further, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Are you looking for a hosting partner that takes speed and security seriously? Then look no further than Kinsta. Their hosting not only delivers lightning fast performance and top tier security, but also provides you with powerful MyKinsta tools. These tools are designed to empower you, making it easy to manage your WordPress site with absolute confidence. And when you need help, they have a WordPress experts available 24 seven. No bots, just real answers and real support from people who understand WordPress. It's no wonder they are rated 4.8 stars on G2 with over 740 reviews from satisfied users. 
This high rating and positive feedback should give you the confidence to trust in their services. Kinsta, the hosting solution that's fast, secure, and always backed by real support. Get started now using the link in the description below. Okay, let's get back on with today's video. Let's delete this one more time. Let's click on the plus, and this time we're going to come down and we're going to say we want to check the referrer's URL. Open this up. Again, we now have some more options. We've still got the is and is not. We've also got contains or does not contain. So you may have a very specific URL you want to address, or you may have something a little bit more broad, like just Facebook or just X or Twitter, whichever you want. So let's say you were running a marketing campaign and you wanted to show a specific advert to people that come from Facebook. Well, what you can do is you can say contains or does not contain or is or is not, whatever kind of works for you. So we'll say in this example, contains, and then we can just type in what we want. So what we're doing here is we're checking the referrer's URL and it contains facebook.com. You can also use dynamic data inside here. So you don't have to be restricted to typing this in. You could, if you wanted to, connect this up to a custom page or custom post type inside your website that has your adverts running and you could put specific URLs inside there that you want to check against, then show and hide based upon those parameters that you set up dynamically. There's so many really cool options you can use here to really open up and expand what you do. Now, if you're getting value for this video, you'd like to be kept up to date whenever new content is added about Bricks or WordPress in general, simply hit that subscribe button down below to be notified when new content is added. Okay, so now let's just move on with the rest of the tutorial. So let's take a look at another example where we can tap into some dynamic data. Now, this is a real world example on a site that I'm building for myself. So this is all set up and working using these conditions. So this is the template that I've created for my courses. And this is a custom post type, so there's custom information inside you and lots of real cool things going on in the background. But what you can see we've got this featured video, which is an overview of what this particular course is about. However, I don't always have a video to back this up, especially when it's just a new course that hasn't been created yet. So I need to have some kind of way of showing something in place of this, which I tend to use the featured image. So let's jump in and take a look at how this template is set up to handle that. Okay, so this is the template. If we take a look, you can see we've got this featured image, which is by here, and underneath we've got the video. So both of these elements are inserted into the design style and have their classes and so on applied to them. There's nothing showing up inside here because this is just a template. We're not showing any live data inside there. So what I've done is I've set up a condition on both of these elements. So if we take a look at the image to start off with, if we come over and open up the conditions, you see inside there, we've chosen the dynamic data function, which is part of the other, which I say is the more comprehensive set of features. Then we're checking against some dynamic data, which is coming from advanced custom fields. As you can see, this is the ACF underscore video underscore URL. If we open up the dynamic data, open up ACF, for example, you can see inside there, these are all my custom ACF fields. And we're checking against one of those to see if there's a value included in it. If it's empty, do something else. If it includes it, then show the video. And the final thing we're doing is just checking. So checking that dynamic data for the specific ACF meta field and checking if it's empty. Then if we go and take a look at the video itself, you can see this is kind of doing the same thing, but checking to make sure it's not empty. So again, dynamic data, still checking the exact same ACF meta field, and then checking it's not empty. So if we've got a link to the video, it'll show the video. If it doesn't have a link, it'll fall back and just show the featured image. But I can set that up to do whatever I want. I can have various different ways in which you'd show or hide this. It's pretty powerful. And this is just using one simple condition and two different elements. Now let's quickly see that in action so you can see how it works. So this Bricks Masterclass hasn't been created yet, so it's only a featured image, no video. So we open this up, you'll see we get the featured image, no video, everything is smooth and seamless. However, if we open up the Figma course, you can see this has a video and now that will show the video. So we're just using it to check those two conditions and show or hide based upon what information we've got in the back end of our site on our custom post type. Step three, stacking conditions. So stacking conditions opens up even more possibilities of how we can really refine when to show or hide different elements. Let's go back to our call to action section. Again, let's select it, come over into our conditions. Let's add our first condition. And from there, we're gonna just scroll down until we see the referrer URL. So we'll choose this option. Again, we'll say contains, and we'll use Facebook as our example. 
Cool, so now we've set up our first condition. But we want to have more than one condition. We want to check against more items. So we want to see that they come from Facebook, but we may not want to show this to our admins. So we need to set up a second condition. We'll click the plus, and now you can see we get the and condition. So now what we can do is we can open this up and we can say, for this example, we'll choose the user role, open the options up and say is not, and you can set this to be maybe administrator. So now we're checking against multiple different conditions. Now that's pretty cool, but maybe you want to create even more powerful conditions and and isn't going to cut it. You maybe want to use or as another way to check things. Well, all we need to do is come up and click on the and because we still have the same call to action selected in this example. We can click the add and now we get an or condition. So we can check these two conditions and we can check for an or condition on top of that. So we may just say we want to check this and say, for example, that they're actually coming from Twitter and that's fine. So again, we can say the referrer URL contains so now what we've done is we've created a far more comprehensive set of different conditions. So the first condition is an AND condition, so both of these have to be true. We can say, or they just come from Twitter and we don't care if they're an administrator. So as long as one of these is met, this will either be showing or hiding depending on what you set up. So when you stack conditions on top of each other, you can get very, very granular on how all of this works. And again, if you want to go even further, you can add additional conditions to your or condition. So we click on the plus, and now you can see we've got an and condition, and now we can go in and set up an and condition as well. So on face value, conditions seem like they're very, very simplistic. But when you realize you can stack them up and you can create quite complex, comprehensive conditions to check against lots of different things, you start to see how powerful these can actually be. And you can easily nest conditions inside various different elements on your project. So we've set up an entire call to action, but you may want to break this right the way down and go down to a specific item or element like the button, for example, and show different buttons based upon different things. There's so many different options you can use these conditions for. They're very powerful. I would encourage you to start experimenting to see how you you can integrate these into your design process. Now, if you want to carry on learning more about working with Bricks Builder, check out this playlist next. And if you want to find all my videos, just head over to learnbricksbuilder.com and all the videos are available there. All applicable links in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.